in the Father, and of the Son, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, uh, one of you uh, sent a YouTube about uh, an ex-Catholic nun who was born sometime in the 19th century and passed away sometime in the 80s of last century. Late Sister Charlotte, or Mrs. Charlotte, God rest her in peace. It is, the title of the YouTube is Dark Secrets About the Catholic Church, narrated by an ex-nun. Actually, I did not have time or enough time to watch the whole video. The first thing I noticed is her innocence as a child, as a young girl, as a young lady, who was somehow, without even her knowing, going to the convent in nearly complete ignorance about what the monastic or religious life or a nun's life was like. Because she seems to say that she only thought that the best way to serve God as a young virgin was to become a nun. But she did not seem to know anything more than that. So, if that was the case, and we are, we have no reason not to believe her, God rest her in peace, then there was, that was not the fault of the Catholic Church. It was the fault of the parents, it was the fault of that priest or that other priest who did not explain to the young, young lady what the life of a nun was about. The indications of the church are exactly the opposite. You don't just decide to become a nun. You go to a convent and the following day or overnight you become a nun. The Catholic Church is very severe in the good sense, very cautious. It gives young ladies long, long years to think about their choice. Even after their vows, you have temporary vows, which means that after those vows, perhaps until up to 13 years after the temporary vows, a young nun who passes from the postulate to the novitiate is always free to leave. By the way, even after the, the eternal vows, the perpetual vows, there is always the possibility to leave the convent without jumping from over the wall. Another thing I noticed in that YouTube was that she was talking perhaps in a negative way about the influence of the father, the spiritual father of confession. Well, confession is meant in the laws, in the prescriptions of the Catholic and the Orthodox Church to help people. Pre not all priests are allowed to hear confessions. They have to be prepared for that. Once upon a time, after your priestly ordination, 
you were submitted to exams, examinations, in order to see whether you were um, able or qualified to hear confessions. Anything that happens contrary or different from this is contrary to the church, uh, I would say, uh, prescriptions, laws that the secret of confession should be kept, that the penitent should be, has to be respected, whatever he or she says, that we have to give the right advice, we as confessors, that in questions of purity or impurity, melius deficere quam abundare, the priest is not supposed to ask for details. All this we learn at the seminary. And if any priest takes advantage from the confession in order, let's say, to entice a woman or a girl, or if any priest reveals the secret of confession, well, in the Catholic Church at least, and I suppose it's the same in the Orthodox Sister Church, well, he is immediately excommunicated without any decree of the bishop. This is what we call well, you don't need the, the, Latin, uh, the Latin expression. In other words, to be a nun is not something vital for Christian life. You can be an excellent virgin without entering a convent. You can be an excellent wife, you can be an excellent mother, the church does proclaim the holiness of virgins outside the convent, the church does proclaim the holiness of women, of ladies who were good wives and good mothers. I hope to have more time in the future to listen to that long YouTube and, and of course I ask your prayers for late sister Charlotte. According to her accent, I believe, if I am not mistaken, that she was from Virginia. Thank you, dear friend.